All right, y'all, what's going on? Oh, they got some more ditch witches out. They just working and working and working. So I didn't get a chance to film right after um the uh, the little snow I showed y'all. But um the azalea, some of the flowers is, you know, it's still blooming, but eh. I got some opacons down there going to work. Let me see, I had three that sank. And it's still three. No, it's four. So I got four down at the bottom that sunk. See how they cracked on their own? All right, so I put the other ones in dirt. They ain't sprouted up yet. Because it's kind of hit or miss, you don't know what you're going to get until. Look at these. I need y'all to be down up under the soil. No more green potatoes. I done told y'all. I need y'all to be down. Okay, so the little frost, it damaged my little potatoes, y'all can see. But I'm not worried about it. They'll come back from the roots. Um, over here, I didn't really, I, I, I knew I wasn't going to get no damage on this stuff. Um, I did throw some more seeds out here. But I'm really going to look into maybe putting my gooseberries over here raspberries and something else that stuff kind of grows good at the edge of shade and that's kind of what this is like during a lot of part of the day it gets shade and then the end part of the day it gets sun so i'm thinking this is going to kind of be a berry patch kind of and i'm going to eventually work out all those um greens um i think i'm going to enlarge that bed Anyway, I got some changes that's going to come, basically. I'm thinking about putting one bed right there that's not square. And maybe that's why I put my berries. But if y'all don't know anything about berries, they work best along a tree edge. Is that Chris? No, that's not Chris. It's too dark. Okay. Um. So, Swiss chard is looking lovely. The kale is starting to grow back. Y'all see these pretty green leaves versus these ratty old ones um garlic y'all can see all my little i was kind of worried this stuff was starting to come up right as the frost was coming you can see some of the little ones still just barely coming up but you can see i replanted all those seeds i think i mentioned that i planted this bed nothing has come up yet more seeds all that's garlic and stuff like that that should green up better um unfortunately my dragon fruit i i protected them but I don't know if they're going to come back from the roots or what. I don't know. So, these dragon fruit made it, though. The ones I did from seed. A piece over there died, but the rest of this is okay. But my big ones that um, Josh sent me, oh, they, they didn't quite make it. And I protected them pretty good, too. But I guess they were just a little too frost sensitive. They do have some dragon fruit that's more frost tolerant. Maybe I should try those. I don't know. Um, and the sad thing is we didn't even get that many days of frost and it did that. So, um, these are red mustards. I just kind of threw these seeds randomly in here. And really what I've been doing is as they grow up, I've been, um, I've been running over that big, there's a big pile of pine straw. I've been running over that with a lawnmower and it creates this really, really pretty mulch. And as they grow up, I mulch more, grow up, mulch more. So eventually that tire will be full up to the top a lot of times you fill these things and rain and they sink down because i filled this one up and and now it has settled not only that the earthworms they come eat this stuff so fast um i did plant all of these i need to put um mulch in this one and this one and fill those up i did mulch over the seeds of this one i planted that one that one has corn squash and okra maybe not okra but i know corn and squash so um my mulberries did start growing back in um this is this mulberry is the same as that mulberry which is supposed to be a white one but unfortunately i think this is a male i really do but you can kind of see the damage there but i'm not worried about it because it's a mulberry it'll continue to grow in the gooseberries the buds are just starting to swell so they haven't really started just coming in yet um, 
these um more peas those are some that are just coming up um there this is my pakistan it started coming in really pretty down here at the bottom and you see all the frost damage but it's not it's not dead um it's actually green all the way up here so i'm, I'm just gonna wait on that let that come back all those blackberries over there are gonna get mowed down I don't want them there. They escaped the pots and I don't want them there. So that's that. Um, I hope y'all will be able to hear me over my loud truck running. So let's see here. Elderberry looking good. Y'all can see all the new growth in there. Um, not worried about the figs. They're starting to do their thing. Let's see. see right here, those are the little bumps where the figs are gonna be, and that's where the bud's gonna come out. Same thing over here. If I can get it to focus. The light's not too good today. It's kind of dark, it's supposed to rain. So there, those little bumps, those will be the figs. See this little bump down here? Th those will be figs too. That's the bud. Um, when it gets this time of year, you'll start to see your figs start to bud out. Um, I, I wouldn't be so worried about figs. I think people baby figs too much. Figs are very, very tough. Um, they're originally a desert plant. Yes, they have bred some to be cold hardy. That's why they had to breed them to be cold hardy, like the Chicago hardy and some of the other ones. It's because... Um, Chicago gets like desert gets snow and and cold but not like Chicago it's very different um, uh, very rarely does the desert actually get the levels of snow and ice that places like Chicago and Detroit and all them places that are you know and then not only that Chicago and Detroit are right around the Great Lakes so they have a huge amount of water there deserts aren't like that so it's a little bit different you have to take into account um, dry cold and wet cold it's very different wet cold can be more catastrophic because um your trees being soaked with water and then that water freezes and that can cause cell wall damage in your plants so it's a little bit different than dry cold dry cold is still dry yes it's cold but less likely to be chance for cell wall damage and stuff like that although ice and things can insulate your plants it depends on how that happens um so yeah but yeah i think people worry about figs too much people be like oh my figs oh, oh, please um if you've got cold hardy figs leave them suckers outside don't cover them don't do nothing just leave them um let them get tougher you know what i'm saying you know um all of these figs i have and like i said you can always tell just like this bud here if you squeeze it and it feels firm you can see the little brown cap has not come off of this one like for instance see how that one's green and if you look on this side it's still brown there's there's always this first little sheath thing that comes off it's like a, i call it a little bud cap but i don't know i don't know what it, i guess it protects it in the winter time i have no clue it's like this one the brown one has come off see how it's green but if you don't see the little green buds and tips, guess what? Sometimes they die. I'm going to try to show y'all. Like this was a branch that died off one year. And when it died off, a new bud started and it went out that way. And then it died this year and that broke up. And another bud went this way. That one died and another one went that way. So figs will... That's why my figs also look like this. Um, some other people's figs look more... Um, pretty for lack of a better term um if you notice between nodes my nodes are usually very short that's number one because it's in a pot um number two that's because i don't feed my figs really heavy um you can get them to grow faster also that's a brown turkey which is to me more of a kind of fig that grows naturally around here um this one over here is the lsu gold and if you look between the nodes you can see how far apart they are. The nodes is where buds will come out. Or you see those little joints. You can see how far apart they are. 
this LSU gold grows way faster. That's because it's bred to do that. Um, so those are differences that you can notice in your plants. And a lot of times you can tell something that's been bred to do something different. Just like um, this is a, I believe this is Emma. And Emma's the same way. The nodes are much longer than the little short kind of stumpy nodes in my brown turkey. Same thing with Violette de Bordeaux. They grow very quickly. Um, these brown turkeys for me never grew quickly, but they always fruited. I think they fruited ever since the first year that I've had them. They've always fruited. Um, this is a Celeste here. The Celeste grows a lot like the, um, the brown turkey too. See how short the nose are? But you can see the, the Celeste is also starting to break bud a lot faster too. It's ready to go. So um, I planted my pigeon peas over here and I planted something else in with the pigeon peas. Oh, um, African uh, Carolina runner, uh, African Carolina runner peanuts or whatever they're called. Um, but they're a peanut that um, used to be very grown a lot back in the day. Um, and, and, but it fell out of favor after the Spanish peanuts came along because Spanish peanuts are bigger, but they say the African runners are tastier. They have more of those good oils in them. Um, that's if you're not allergic to peanuts. Um, so, yeah, I definitely wanted to grow those African runner peanuts. Because uh, y'all know I have a running theme in this garden. I try to grow a lot of stuff that the ancestors grew. And I try to stay away from stuff that's colonizer foods. Um, that's why I'm determined to get those pigeon peas right. Got to get those right. Uh, let's see. So I've been starting seeds. I didn't, I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't film. I just really needed to get the seeds started. Um, so I started a whole bunch of stuff. In the blue things, I have three different kinds of papayas. Uh, Wymanello, Sunset, and Sunrise. Those are the three types of uh, papayas. I have a uh, Jamaican sorrel there. Um, I have a lot of different peppers. I have not started tomatoes yet, and I will tell you why. But I have a lot of different peppers. Um, Brazilian fantasy, um, Cuban ales, um, what else? Uh, Jamaican scotch bonnets, yellows and reds. Um, what else? I, I, a lot of stuff. Um, but I still have yet have stuff to plant. Um, I have some callaloo that I want to plant. I want to do callaloo again. I, I'm, I'm determined to not let these pests get the best of me. <laughs> um, some of my peanuts, I, did, I, I grew peanuts here and didn't harvest them. And they started to come up. And then the frost kind of, but they'll come back up. Um, I try to kind of plant peanuts. And for those of y'all that don't know, peanuts, you know, were brought here by slaves, by the way. Just want to mention that. Because, um, you know, they think that oftentimes some people think that, you know, black people didn't, didn't know how to do nothing. They just, you know, had us for labor. No, we actually knew how to grow the stuff. It wasn't that they needed free labor that much. No, they actually didn't know how to grow nothing. But anyway, um, I put peanuts everywhere because... If you don't know, peanuts, nitrogen fixers, that's number one. Number two, they're so easy to grow. No bugs eat them. Um, even if you don't like peanuts, I would suggest you grow peanuts just to help enrich your soil a little bit. Um, you can give the peanuts away if you don't want them. Um, or you can feed them to the squirrels. Like, once you harvest your peanuts, you can strategically put peanuts places and draw the squirrels to those peanuts and away from your gardens. I think some of y'all sometimes is kind of focused on how do I keep the squirrels out how to but use logic squirrels are hungry feed them feed them away from your garden if you draw them to an area away from your garden where they're where it's easy for instance if you had to go somewhere and you actually have to dig in the ground or snatch something off a plant and risk being seen and then after you snatch off the tomato or whatever it is then you have to run for your life up a tree Versus if someone just put a little tray full of peanuts down over in a corner where it's, it's kind of secluded. Nobody ever really goes there. And you could just grab the peanut and eat it and go on about your business. Which one are you more likely to do? Like squirrels are, it's not that squirrels are stupid. They're very smart. 
It's just that a lot of times they have to dig in your garden to get those acorns or to dig up your peas or your peanut or whatever they're digging up. Versus if you were to put something somewhere else, they'd be like, oh, this is easy. I can just go over here and get this because I don't have to work for this. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes use your brain um, to outsmart animals. Um, there's a reason why humans were given rationale and logic. It's because we're intended to use our heads for something other than a hat rack. Um, but I came over here to show y'all the turnips. Um, they're doing great. These are new tree collards. Um, I know people was rooting for me to save the old tree collards. I'm sorry, y'all. They just, when they first got started, they were growing great. And then, I don't know, this must be my best bed. This tree collard is taking off the best. This leaf wasn't even here when I planted this. But if you look at the turnips, look at how the turnips look. Like, you can just, like, those turnips and stuff look good, but this bed must be the best bed. Um, I also have another tree collard over here that's not looking, like, it's not looking great, but I think it's going to take. Um, I still have not planted anything back there. I really haven't planted anything over there. I'm thinking that right in here is where my callaloo will be. Um... Turmeric is going to come up in this. If y'all remember, I never harvested the turmeric or the peanuts. There's ginger and turmeric over there. Um, this was an ant mound, but the ants have since vacated. Um, this is where my bananas were, and I protected them. Um, some of them, let's see. This one I lost. I can tell by how mushy it is. See, see how bendy it is? I lost that one. But what? look at this. What is this? Is this banana or is this something else? You have to be careful over here because see, some stuff will try to play you. No, for I think that's banana. I think this is a banana. So we have a brand new banana coming up. So if you think burying your bananas will kill them, think again. Um, this one's still very hard, so I'm thinking that it might grow back. This one's mushy. That one's kind of hard, kind of down low. So I don't know. We'll see what comes back from what. I'm tired of losing them all the way down to the corms. That's getting old really quickly. Um, because I'll never get bananas at this rate. Um, but I guess maybe I'll end the video. It's 17 minutes. I'll end the video with some beautiful daffodils. So... Um, I didn't plant these daffodils. Whoever lived here before me, planted. I planted some in the front, but all of these, like on the sides and all these different places, I did not plant. There are more coming up there. Um, this is the first time that they've actually flowered like this because I've actually been keeping this clear to where they can get sunlight and do their thing. So, so yeah, they're kind of pretty, I guess. People always say, oh, well, I always say I'm not a flower person, which I'm really not. Um, but these were already here and I'm gonna keep them here. And I'm gonna say this, I haven't really seen any bees, which is disheartening. I don't really like that, but it is what it is. Um, I got a few minutes, maybe I'll hurry up and try to show y'all the greenhouse. Y'all can see my pears breaking bud. Remember when I said I was cutting all that off? Yep, didn't cut it and now it's blooming and now I don't wanna cut it. I have a hard time cutting things when they're blooming. Um, I'm going to go back over here. I have so many freaking projects for the spring, y'all. I, I'm going to try to keep filming as much as I can. But a lot of times, y'all, I just have to get out here and get it done. You see my boxes? See my greenhouse back up? Long story short, let me tell y'all this. And I, I may try to show you on the inside because I really can't show you on the outside. This is not the same frame. That's the frame over there on the ground. This is my blueberry. It's blooming. It's doing its thing as usual. It has a lot of blooms um, that have come out and are still coming. That's the old frame. Do me a favor, y'all. If you're going to get a greenhouse, strap it down and strap it down good the first time. I knew mine wasn't anchored and I kept just getting by with the winds not being as high. Like it would rain, but the winds weren't as high. And I had it anchored some, but I knew I didn't have it anchored the way that I wanted it. And I hadn't bought the anchors that I, that I wanted yet because um, I wanted to do it right the first time. So, I don't know if y'all can see this blue thing here. These are anchors. I have four of them. It's anchors that I got from Amazon. They're 16 inches long. They're very thick steel. And they screw into the ground. Um, and then I have rope going over the frame. 
not just over the plastic over the frame the frame is what you really want to anchor because the the plastic attaches to the frame as you can see um and then also i'm going to tell you this about these greenhouses somebody asked me about the one that i got i'm going to leave the link to this one however you know what this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna cut this video here and then I'm going to come back with a greenhouse video to tell y'all what to look for in greenhouses because that would be very good content. And I don't want to run this video and make this video a million years long. So uh, my papayas did die. My moringa died. But good thing I have a great friend in California. Thank you, Chuck Weezy. She always sending me stuff. And, you know, I sent her some seeds recently. And she was like, thank you. And I'm thinking to myself, all this stuff you done sent me thus far. I mean, this woman is incredible. But, um... She got the hookup. Her mother-in-law grows various things. Sweet potatoes. The white sweet potatoes I got from her. Um, the um, the moringa I got from her. Um, the two These two figs in here I got from her. Those came from her mother-in-law. All of these calamondins. This woman sent me seeds. They all germinated. And I'm going to sell them, make money, and keep some. Because these are the two calamondins that I'm going to keep. Um, so she always makes it possible for me to keep doing what I'm doing. And also make some bread off of it and she sent me some more seeds she sent me like some tangerine seeds and some other kind of seeds and i gotta get those in the ground asap um because citrus does take a while to germinate but usually it will germinate but i just wanted to show y'all in the greenhouse real quick um i did not lose anything this last frost i must get my muscadines in the ground i must i'm gonna get my Meyer lemon i know my Meyer lemon looking rough but it's not dead i promise you um Let's see. Those greens look good. I'm gonna take those out of there with the with the calamondins. I'm gonna sell the calamondins and the um, mulberry and the um, palm wonderful pomegranates. Which the palm wonderful pomegranates, they are freaking coming into their own. I mean, they're getting so tall and leafing out. So yeah, the lemongrass is coming back. I need to get all the dead out of that. So y'all see what I'm saying? I have so much stuff to do, y'all. I just come in here and just go. Goji berry. Let me see if I can show y'all. This right here is the goji berry. That thing. If you want something that's foolproof, please get a goji berry. Like nobody's mentioning how easy that thing is to grow. I do nothing. I don't I bear I barely water it. I I haven't fed it since I put it in that pot. Now, yes, that is compost mixed in with uh, uh, just random soil that I reuse cuz like all of these, all the soil gets reused. I don't throw away soil. I don't know who doing that. You know, all of this sanitization, I, I don't do none of that stuff. And I never have disease. I never have any of that stuff in my garden. So, and maybe I should do a video about that. But anyway, I'm saying all that to say, it's it's gently raining. I'm in the greenhouse. And I'm liking that because I can come in here and work and not get rained on. When my greenhouse blew down, I was very, very sad. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had a little bit of damage too which I'm going to get some um, really good uh, tape or something and tape that up. I'm probably going to have to tape it from the inside, though. Or I might tape it from the inside and the outside. But, um, but yeah, guys, um, I'm going to do this video. And I wanted to mention to y'all, Lazarus came back. That's what I'm calling my, my longevity spinach. That one and that one over there. I'm calling them Lazarus because they have come back from the dead. But, um, yeah, y'all, so... Stay tuned. I'm going to do the video about the greenhouse. And if you're trying to buy one, what you should buy, what you should look for. Yada, yada, yada. So you don't waste your money. And because I kind of cost myself some money. But anyway, until next time. Uh, see you guys later. Is that what I'll be saying? I have forgotten my outro. Lord.